this guide, I'm going to show you a really handy way of finding and removing dust spots from your final images in Capture One. Now, as photographers, we have to accept that dust spots are a fact of life. We don't live and work in a vacuum, and unfortunately, the air around us is full of particles wherever we are. It could be the red dust from the, the rock down here. It could be lint from clothing. It could even be the cleaning fibers from the cloth that I use to clean my camera. If I'm changing my lens out in the field, I'm opening the chamber of the camera up and I'm exposing the sensor to the risk of attracting dust. Same with the back element of the lens, same with the front element of the lens, and even the filters that we put in front of our camera in order to control exposure, they can all attract and store dust. Now what tends to happen is, despite how careful we are, and we can try cleaning these cameras every two seconds in between every single shot, the chances are when you get home, let's just zoom in here, at some point you're going to see the odd dust spot or squiggle or something like that on the lens. Now it could be on the sensor, it could be on the lens itself, they typically show themselves, let me just zoom in quite high here so you can see, they show themselves as like little bullet holes and they sit in the mid-tones of your picture. The reason they tend to sit in the mid-tones is because they're not completely blocking the light, they're so small that the light can actually quite often get around them. But especially at really small apertures, if it's on the lens, then you're going to see a blockage of that light and we're going to appear as a little dark spot on the picture. So that's for a, a typical spot, just a particle. This here could be, I don't know, a piece of lint, it could even be an eyelash or something like that. Up here, this is probably a thread from a piece of cloth, could even have been the cleaning cloth that we then used afterwards to clean the filter that this was taken with. But in all those cases, Capture One has a tool built in to fix um, these scenarios, which is the dust spot removal tool. So along the toolbar up here, we've got our little uh, healing brush um, tool, click and hold, and we've got the remove spot option. I can also press O on my keyboard, that'll get me to the same place. And I'm presented with a crosshair and a circle, which is giving me the idea of how big the dust spot is. So I can either right click and change the radius with the mouse, or I can use the square brackets left and right on the keyboard to make this spot a little bit smaller or bigger. You need this circle to be slightly bigger than the dust spot you're trying to get rid of. And if I click on the dust spot and click on that dust spot, we can see Capture One does a pretty good job of removing those spots. Those dust spots, um, you can either get back to them by going back to the dust spot tool and you'll see the little circles. Or if you go to the details tab on your tool palette on the left and scroll down, you'll see there's a spot removal palette. And under here, you've got the number of spot removal um, areas you've created. It maxes out towards 100, but so just be aware of that. You'll get a limit of how many dust spots you can get rid of. But there are other tools that we can use as well to get rid of those spots when we found them. So let's just delete these two and start from scratch. And that's the key thing when you found them, because on the one hand, removing the dust spots can be arduous. We don't like doing it. It's, it's like tidying and cleaning and wiping surfaces and so on. It's a chore, but we have to do it to make sure our picture looks right. But it's finding them that can often be the problem. And dust spots don't always just sit in the highlights. They do also sit in the shadows. It's just less obvious because unfortunately, as I say, they sit in the midtones and they darken. Uh, so they're not quite as pronounced as they are in the sky. But there are ways of finding them. And I'm going to show you a really cool method of doing it now that will hopefully help you find them easier, but also be able to heal them a lot faster. So to do this, we're going to create two layers and we're not going to rely on any of Capture One's automation to do it. We're going to do it manually. So I'm going to first create a layer, which is going to be a heel layer. That heel layer, I'm going to call dust removal. You can call it whatever you like, but this is going to be our layer that effectively removes all the dust when we're going through it. And this is the layer that's going to stay with the image for the whole time that we're producing it. Then we're going to create another layer and this is going to be a disposable layer and we need to click on the plus and hold because we want to create a new filled adjustment layer and it's important that it's filled. The reason it's filled when we turn our mask on is because I need this layer to affect everything across the whole image, not just one part of it. So I want a 100% filled layer, which is what that filled layer does. Let me turn the mask off. And now we're going to name this and we can call it a variety of things, but bear in mind this is a layer that we are not going to keep with the image once we're done. So some people call it a dust finder, some people call it a dust spot finder, some people call it a dust spot scanner, some people, and I've seen it, um, call it yuck delete, um, and you'll see why in a second, but whatever you want to call it, you need to make sure that you remember this is the one that you're going to remove when you're finished. So I'm going to call it dust spot scanner for now. 
with this layer, just for the sake of giving you a bit of an element of surprise, I'm going to zoom into where I believe our dust spots are. And you can see on the screen, there are a few spots around. It's not too bad, but there are quite a few in there that we need to fix. I'm going to set the layer opacity to zero. You don't have to do this, but for the purposes of demonstrating, I'm going to do this so that we get more of an effect um, when I turn it on. And then I'm going to do these very, very simple things on our exposure tab. So let's go to exposure. And on our exposure panel here, I'm going to leave, ironically, exposure alone. I'm going to turn contrast 100% up, so in other words, to 50 on the scale. I'm going to turn brightness a little bit down, somewhere between 10 and 20, minus. And I'm going to turn saturation a little bit down, anywhere between minus 50 and minus 60. Moving on to our high dynamic range area, I'm going to put the highlights completely recovered, so minus 100. And our shadows completely recovered too, increased, so plus 100. So highlights down, shadows up, and then we're going to go to clarity, and I'm going to put our clarity somewhere between 50 and 70, so 60 is fine, and I'm going to move structure to exactly the same place. Now while I was doing that, because I set my opacity to zero, you're not going to see any change. Now I'm going to put the opacity up to 100, so you can see what that layer has actually done to the image. And there's our dust spots, um, all 327 million of them. As I said, I think I said earlier, but basically this uh, was actually shot with a filter that had a lot of dust on it. Um, we discovered that after the first shot, cleaned it, um, and then corrected it from then on. But this particular shot was full of dust all over the scene. Now that layer, as you can see, if I turn it off, now you'll be able to see the dust spots a little bit easier. And part of that is because your mind has now been trained to see where they were. But turning it on, they are so much more obvious. So it's a lot easier and a lot quicker to go around with that dust spot tool and click and delete. Now let's just go into detail as to why we've done each of those slider changes. Remember I said that the dust spots sit in the middle, they're a mid-tone problem. So what we want to do effectively is isolate the mid-tones and push everything else out. So we want to push anything that's slightly above a mid-tone to be blown out or towards the highlight area, and anything that is slightly below the mid-tone to be pushed into the shadows. That means that our grey areas, our dust spots, the real bits that we're trying to focus on, are sat there quite obvious, quite blatant in front of us because everything else has been pushed away. So to do that, we're picking up the contrast on our histogram and we're stretching it. So we're pushing the contrast way out. That takes everything just to the right. Let's just move this here. So just to the right of the mid-tone, it pushes it up. Just to the left of the mid-tone, pushes it down. And what that's doing is it's pushing everything right and left except for those greys, and that's where our dust spots are sat. Brightness is actually more to do with uh, how long you want to look at the screen. So if I reset the brightness, by doing that contrast change, it can create a very, very, very high contrast image, which is actually quite difficult to look at for a long period of time. So by pulling the brightness down, it makes it not only easier on our eyes, but also slightly easier to see these spots themselves. We're not doing it with exposure. And the reason we're not doing it with exposure is because I don't want to push any shadows off the edge. Remember that a dust spot can equally sit in the shadows as it can in the highlights. So if I use the exposure slider, and we've covered this in another session on brightness and exposure, that slider is going to move the whole histogram left or right, meaning that any shadows that were near to the zero um, value are going to be off and underexposed. So we don't do it with exposure, we do it with brightness, which effectively squeezes our histogram down towards the lower level. It makes it easier to see, it makes it clearer on the dust spots, but it hasn't lost any data. Saturation is a personal thing. Some people prefer to do it with saturation left exactly where it was. Some people prefer to do it with no saturation and focus on black and white. But for me, somewhere between the sort of 50 to 70 mark is about right. High dynamic range. Well, let's just reset these sliders a second and remember what we're trying to achieve with these spots. So our high dynamic range tool has an effect of flattening an image. And when it comes to these mid-tones of these spots, that can be really useful. Now, in a traditional picture, we wouldn't want to push these too far because it makes the image look cartoony. Pulling the highlights down and the shadows up flattens the image. But the result in this case is that it makes those spots more obvious. If you look at the difference before and after. It goes from being a lot clearer to really clear. And then the final little bit to the recipe, which is the clarity and structure. Now, remember, clarity is a mid-tone adjustment. And these, these dust spots sit in the middle. They're in the mid-tones. So clarity is going to help us define those mid-tones, which is what we want. We want to define the dust spot. And let me just zoom really, really closely in. So I'm going to undo both of these. So look at the difference that clarity makes. First off, the clarity in itself just makes that 
dust spot pop a little bit. So if we go back to our 60 or 65, so without and with. Now what it's also doing is bringing up noise. The result of bringing up the noise is actually we've brought up some texture around the dust spot, which actually just makes it easier visually to see. Structure is another one. Now this one really makes it pop. So if I move our structure up to 60, you can now see this halo around the dust spot. So effectively we're highlighting where that spot is. So with those two sliders, it's just about making it more and more and more obvious. Now, you remember I mentioned that this layer we're going to delete. The dust spot scanner is going to be deleted. There's a reason, because this makes the image look hideous. It is the worst thing you could possibly do to the image, but it makes the dust spots obvious. If I even zoom down here, so we've actually got dust spots. There's one here, there's one here in the river that we wouldn't have noticed before because they were all sat in the mid-tones and the lower mid-tones. We've now got the ability to see them easily. Let's just zoom up here into our dust spot area. Now, here's the key thing. We do not fix the dust spots on the scanner layer or the finder layer or the yuck delete layer. So this adjustment layer is only temporary to show where the dust spots are. If I start fixing it on this layer, when I delete this layer, that's gone. But more importantly, I'm trying to fix something that doesn't make any sense because I don't know. So for example, let's just fix it on this layer. Uh, let's just zoom into here. Remember all those adjustments I made are designed to make the image look hideous. So if I do this here, it's not going to actually fix it. It's going to make it look weird. It's going to make it look wrong. So that's no good to us. What we need to do is to fix these on our dust removal layer, which is a healing layer underneath. There's a reason as well that it was a healing layer. So number one, of course, I can use our dust spot tool on that layer to remove dust spots that are easier to see now as a result of our little tool. But what I can also do is use our healing mask. Now, our healing mask doesn't have a limit in terms of the number of points that I can have, whereas the spot removal does. So I can just click here and it's going to heal. Click here, click here. I can even go over my spot removal areas that didn't do it particularly well here, here and here. But more importantly, with the healing tool, I can go for irregular shapes. So if I go back to my healing brush, so I can press Q on the keyboard to do it, or I can go up to the top and choose my healing mask, or I can click on it here in the palette. But it's choosing the right origin. I can move it manually or manually if I want to, if I don't believe it's got it right. But in this case, it did. And I can click and delete all these dust spots pretty instantly. You can see it's pretty reactive. Um, it's doing a really good job. And even up to here, so even complex bits like this piece of hair or fluff or whatever, uh, let's go back to our healing tool. I'm just going to draw over there. And that's now gone. Now, when I remove the dust spot scanner layer, that looks perfectly clean. And that's the difference. So we're using the dust spot scanner layer to see the dust spots. We fix the dust spots on our dust removal layer. And you can do that with the dust spot tool. So the O key on the keyboard or remove spot or you can fix it with the healing mask tool. In certain circumstances, you might want to use the cloning mask, but normally it's going to be the healing or the remove spot tool that you use. Once you've made all those changes and you've got rid of all the spots, and don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch me uh, do all of these on this session. Um, once you've done that, we're going to delete or disable the dust spot scanner layer. There's nothing that says you have to actually delete that layer, but you certainly want to make sure it's not visible ready for print. So let's apply the exact same scenario to a, a image with a lot less dust spots in. So also bear in mind, this image here has had already quite a few um, tweaks made to it. So we've got some um, different layers and different uh, masks and so on on the hexagons and on the sky. Doesn't matter. We can still create our dust tools on top of these layers. So I'm going to create a new heel layer and I'm going to call that heel layer dust removal. And I'm going to create a new filled adjustment layer. And we're going to call that one just for fun yuck delete because i'll never forget when someone did that for me um, now our adjustment layer here we're going to make those changes exactly like we did before so exposure we leave where it is contrast we put up to maximum 50. brightness i'm going to pull down a touch not too much in this case because we've got some dark areas here saturation i'm going to pull down a bit so i can focus on the detail highlight i'm going to pull down to completely recovered shadow up completely restored look at the difference that's made to how much we can see now go to clarity put them at between 50 and 60 and let's look at the sky so already let's go without 
Now you can probably see them a bit easier now that I've shown you where they were, but there's one here and one here. Let's turn that layer on. There they are, nice and obvious. I go back to my dust removal filled layer, which has no changes made to it at all. And this is a heal layer, so I can go straight to my healing brush and I can draw, draw, I think, oh no, there's a couple more. Draw, draw, and capture one is gonna do a fantastic job of just removing, oh, there's another couple there, removing these little spots. Some of them we wouldn't have even noticed. And what happened, what I've found nine times out of 10, you don't notice it until you print it big. And then when you look at the big print, which has cost quite a lot to produce, you go, ah, back to the drawing board. So with those changes made, just a few healing brush um, elements. So let's just go on there so you can see where they all are. That's on my dust removal layer. I can turn off or I can delete my dust yuck delete layer or my dust finder or my dust spot finder or whatever I want to call it. And the dust spots are gone. They're easy to see with this. If I turn off that removal layer, because if I want to see where the dust spots were, I can just disable the removal layer. There are my dust spots back again. So I've got two separate layers. One fixes the dust spot, one finds them.